Hi everyone, welcome back to another tutorial. Um, thank you again for joining me. It has been kind of very messy these past couple of weeks, hasn't it? Trying to sort of videos and upload new videos. Um, I have an update as well. It's only a small update. I was contacted by YouTube um, support and they told me to set up a new channel, um, just an empty channel, so that if they can get all my videos back, um, they can just import all my old videos back into the empty channel now i have another channel set up um it's just called stephen conway oil painting so i'm hoping that they can get all my videos back and that they will import everything back into that channel in which case um, now i'm very doubtful this will happen but if it does it means that we'll have to resubscribe to my new channel again i know it's an awful nightmare having to resubscribe constantly but if it does happen um, that will be the case. You just have to. I I share my new link then to everyone multiple multiple times. So yes. Um, so I will then have to import my newer videos onto that channel. Do you understand what I mean? To keep everything up to date. Now I'm hoping they can get my videos back. I don't know if they will, to be honest, because they told me after two weeks they just remove everything and it just gets deleted. Now it's been five weeks, six weeks. So I don't think they will have the video, to be quite honest. But he did say to me that they will pass it up higher up in the office. Um, and they will try and do their best to get everything back. So, well, look, let's see what they say. I've heard nothing back now in about a week so far. So I'll just wait and see what happens. But in the meantime, I'll just keep uploading to this channel, okay? Um, I know it's an awful pain in the backside now having to resubscribe to new channels and all this kind of thing it's very 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 messy and it just it makes things very complicated for me because i'm uploading videos to my new channel but now i might have to re-upload all of them again to another new channel if you know what i mean it's just very very kind of complicated and very annoying so i'm just kind of going along every week things are changing so it's very it's very kind of up and down and I don't know whether I'm coming or going or what I'm supposed to be doing so I, I appreciate your patience I know it's very very um, annoying for you as well having to ch keep chopping and changing and all this kind of stuff so look I'm just gonna focus anyway on this week in a tutorial this week I had a video on my old channel of a field with lovely big red poppies in it okay flowers um, poppy fields I called it it was a fantastic tutorial and I had a lot of requests in the past couple of weeks to upload that one um, from all our viewers and from from people on Facebook um, I checked my hard drive and I just cannot find it on my hard drive it must have got deleted by some accident or some I, I don't know how but it's gone off my hard drive I don't have any more copies of it unless now YouTube send me all my old videos which would be great um, so I'm going to do it again slightly different it was a kind of a sunset sky with lovely poppies all along the front um, but I'm not going to do a sunset sky I'm just going to do a nice kind of it's a very soft kind of a subtle landscape with bright red poppies in the front uh, it's going to be very very similar in fact the only difference will be the sky so I'm going to do that this week I do have a lot of other requests that I want to get through um, there's a couple of snow scenes I want to do uh, <coughs> so it's changing all of the time every week so I'm going to focus on that this week, alright? Nice landscape, simple techniques, but very dramatic and very eye-catching, okay? I'm going to show you how to do that in simple steps. You don't have to make it complicated, alright? So get your stuff and your supplies, get ready to follow me along with this. This is going to be a good one. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Thank you so much again for watching. Don't go anywhere. Okay, here we go. Um, this is my palette. I'm going to color my colors to you. I have titanium white, Naples yellow, phthalo blue, or French ultramarine will do as well. Um, burnt umber, alizarin crimson, cadmium red, cadmium yellow pale, and some lamp black, or any black that you have will do fine. My canvas is 20 inches long by 16 inches high. I primed it twice, gave it a light sand with sandpaper, and it's lovely and smooth. And look, I did a quick sketch, just a quick couple of outlines. Now you can see the photograph there. I just outlined the top of the hills in the distance and just one or two lines where the trees are. Just very, very roughly, that's all. So it's nice and simple. <coughs> now, excuse me. I also have a little drop of turpentine 
in my jar here. Look, just a tiny, tiny, tiny amount. That's all you need. I have some tissue and of course my stubby brush. And I have lots of small brushes, mostly flat, okay? Well, in fact, they're all flat. Flat brushes, all right? Various shapes and sizes. Some are very worn, some are not very worn, okay? That's what I have. I'm going to start with this lovely stubby brush. My stubby brush, it's been used now maybe three or four times. So it's bulked up, you can see it's nice and bulky and it's still very soft. And it's fantastic for doing trees and things like that, see? And it's great for doing skies. So let's do, let's start with the sky. It's a very simple grey kind of a sky, isn't it? A very darkish kind of a sky. But I'm going to start off with a little bit of brightness just along there. And for that, I'm just going to firstly dampen my brush in the turpentine. So it's now wet. I'm going to then dry it on my tissue. Look, soak off the excess, just like that. Let's take some white, lots of white. And that'll thin very, very slightly, only slightly. And I'll take a tiny touch of phthalo blue. Now a tiny little touch, you see how much that's changed? A tiny amount makes a huge difference with phthalo because it's very, very rich. I think that's fine. Now, I'm just going to put that spray patch just along here, and you can see it's quite thin. You see, it's very, it's like a thin cream. It's moving right along nicely on my smooth canvas. If you have a canvas which is a sort of a slightly cheaper canvas, um, they are very dry and they're very rough like sandpaper, and the paint dries into them. Uh, but I always prime my canvases. Now, if, I'm buy, if, if I purchase a very expensive canvas, a really good, like a Doyle or Roni or something like that, or a Windsor Newton canvas. Um, I don't prime it because it's fine, it's, it's really well primed, but a lot of the cheaper canvases are very dry and they've just sprayed on cheap primer. So I will prime them again with my own primer, okay? It's just a thought. Now, um, that's it, okay? We have our brightness there. I'm gonna mix a nice dark grey now for the rest. It's simple, warm, grey. Now there's a lot of, there's a hint of pink in this landscape, I can see it, even in the sky. The greys are slightly kind of pinky. Um, it's just because I've been doing it so long, you kind of train your eyes to spot little colours. And it's a pinky grey. The best way to make a pinky grey is simple. Just black, okay? Lamp black, mix everything here, where you did mix already. A little bit of white. And a little bit of crimson, that's all. And you have a lovely pinky grey. It's a grey, but it's a kind of a warm grey. It's a pinkish type of a grey. It's lovely. Let me try that. Now, see it's moving across lovely on the canvas, isn't it? So let me just sit back now for a moment and have a look at that. A quick look. You can see it's pinky, isn't it? Now, if it's a bit too warm, all you have to do is add a touch of blue to it, okay? Let me show you. I'll do that again. So I'll take some black. I'll take a touch of pink, a little touch of pink. Some white. Because when you add the white, you can see the colour properly, the colour you want. Now I'm just going to dampen it very slightly, just with a little turpentine on the corner of my brush. Just a tiny amount. And if you want to make it more bluey, just take a touch of blue. Now remember, it's very rich, so a tiny little bit, look, just on the corner of your brush. It's always better to add tiny amounts as you go, rather than just overpowering it with loads. Tiny little amounts makes a big difference. Now. Let me try that. That's a bit cooler, you see? It's only slightly cooler. Let me take a touch of white into that now. And let me just put that across there. I'm just going to go along the top of the blue there, the bright blue. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to bring it down into this and I'm going to just wiggle the brush along little bits and it's going to get thinner and thinner and lift off, you see? So now what's happening is I'm picking up some of the blue and it's going up into the grey and the easiest way to do nice clouds is basically just go around in circles, look. Just swing your brush around in little circles and leave it gently fade off into the blue like that. And you have a nice simple cloud. That's probably the easiest way of doing clouds. Easily and effectively. See? Little swirls here and there. And you can already start to see the sky coming together, can't you? <coughs> Excuse me. Now let's take a bit more. And let's come down. 
It's actually a bit bluer down at the bottom, isn't it? Off in the distance. I'll take a touch more blue, a little bit more white, and a touch more of the black. So now it's a bit more blue look, you see? And I'll be honest now, there's that much turpentine in this mix right now. It's more paint, but because I only have to cover a little bit of canvas, I'm just going to scrub it along, okay? Just scrub it along that dry canvas. The paint will move. Don't worry. And I'm even going to soften some of it here and there along that blue and up into the grey then, you see? Now, let me see. Um, I'm going to dampen the corner of my brush again. I'm going to take more white into that. Make it a little bit lighter. Let's go over here and just scrub all that in there. Blend it all in nicely. And we do get quite dark over here then, don't we? So let's take a touch of black. And this time I might take a touch of the burnt umber with a touch of the blue. Scrub that now in there. It's a very, very thin mix. It's very difficult to explain on camera. It's a very thin mix. Um, I'm not putting loads of paint on the, the canvas. Um, I'm just scrubbing it along into the canvas, you see. Now I'm putting some of the lighter colour down into that and vice versa. So it's making lots of different shades, see? Lights and darks, darks and lights. Now let's just sit back for a moment and take a quick look at that. That is not bad. It's not bad at all. Um, I'm going to just, look what I'll do is i go straight across here first, right? Now that's my sky, all my sky area painted. And I'm just going to start adding some little lights and stuff here and there. So I'm putting that down. And what I might do is, let me just see now for a moment. Create some nice clouds up there somewhere, okay? I'm going to take another brush. I'll take a very kind of a rough brush like this, you see? It's very worn, sticking all over the place. I'll just try that brush for now. And I'll mix a little dark, a nice dark now, okay? Um, I'll take a dry brush because this is already quite wet. A dry brush, some black, some phthalo blue, and a little crimson. And with that dark colour, I'm going to go up now and start, let me see, we have a nice dark up here, don't we? Now was that a bit blue? I think a touch more crimson might help. Perhaps even a touch of burnt umber. Just to warm it down slightly. I'm going to go along here and I'm going to add some real dark clouds in. So we have some little dark clouds flicking across in front of the lighter clouds. You see? And even down here, just darken one or two of those, just a little, and even across there, look. Keeping it nice and simple all the time. I suppose the trick with this is not to overdo it, because you can very easily overdo this and just have loads of patches of black all over the place. I think the trick is to know when enough is enough. Um, that's what I would say. So let me just get this picture fixed here now and I go over here and add a bit of dark to that. I might add a bit more blue to that side. Bit of blue and a touch of black. So I use my bigger brush for all the filling in, the blocking in. Then I just switch to a smaller brush to add little clouds like this. You see? That's generally what I do. And all I'm doing is going around in circles, you see? I'm scraping it around in circles. Sometimes at an angle, sometimes not. And I'll come down then. It's quite dark over here. I want to create a nice kind of a dark landscape and then have bright red poppies popping out at the front. I think that will be really dramatic, but it's really easy as well. Now, let me just stop there a moment and take a look at what we have. I like the nice bright section we have. 
We also have a bright section down at the bottom, don't we? So I'm going to just dampen that for a moment. Okay, I'm going to dip it in my turpentine and just leave it soak off most of that damp colour, see? Now it's relatively clean, that will do fine. We have a nice warm kind of a pinkish kind of a tone down there, so I'm going to take some crimson and some Naples yellow and lots of white. And I'm going to just mix a nice rich orangey sort of a colour, a sort of a salmony, peachy, orangey kind of a tone. Do you understand? And I'm going to go down here, I'm just going to put a couple of little wiggles across here and there, look. Now you don't want too much yellow in this, I'd say more pink, I'd say 70% pink, 30% Naples yellow. Because if you put too much yellow, it's just going to go green with that grey, you see. Grey and yellow will make a green. So be careful. And look, I'm just going to pull some of that gently across. And you can even use your finger, rub it off into that dark look. So we now have a nice warm hue going across the bottom of the sky, don't we? And it's that simple. Done. So I think now I'll just leave the sky done as it is. What you can do, and what I might do, is with a soft blender brush, look. Lovely soft brush, just soften across very gently. It just takes away some of the brush marks and it makes the sky lovely and soft, you see? You can leave them if you like, but I like a nice soft sky because I don't want the sky taking over the painting. I want the focus to be on these bright poppies so everything else is just in the background. And this will push everything back into the background, you see? Now, how's that? See, a nice subtle sky with a nice bright patch up in the corner there. That's just what I want. Simple, finished, job done. Okay, next let's take, um, let me see now what brush will I go with. I'll go with my medium stubby. And we have a nice soft colour off in the landscape there, don't we? I'm going to make a nice pale, kind of dark, greeny, blacky colour. So I'll dampen my brush again, dry it on the tissue. Let's go in here and take some black, some blue, and again a bit of white. I don't want to go too light with this. Um, let me have a look at that now. Perhaps a touch more blue. I'm using tiny, tiny, tiny amounts of blue, all right? And a touch of Naples yellow. That'll make it a slightly more greeny, bluey kind of a colour for a distant hill. Okay, let's just take a look and see. See what I mean? It's a distant colour, it's not too rich, but it's not too kind of cool either. It's, I think it's just enough to suggest hills off in the distance. And it's all to do, I suppose, with the composition. Um, you know, I'm kind of looking at the colours of my sky. I don't want something to be too brash and con too much contrast. I want something to have similar tones. So, in other words, for me, to make a painting successful, you have to look at all the colours in your painting and you have to incorporate all of those colours throughout your painting. So there'll be a little bit of the sky colour in the foreground, there'll be a little bit of the foreground colour in the sky. Do you understand? So greens and greys, browns and greys, all of those colours will complement each other. So I'm focusing on, like there's a lot of grey in this painting. Um, but I don't want to just overdo it with grey. Now, you can see we have a nice colour off in the distance, don't we, okay? What I'm going to do is put a darker colour in front of that. So I'm just basically going to take some brown, or some black, sorry. Now to make a nice greeny, greeny grey again, you can just mix some black with some brown. And that will give you a nice darker shade of a kind of a mucky green. Let's try that. There we are. And don't worry if it picks up some of that colour from underneath. That's fine. There you see. So now we have one hill in front of the other hill. You see what I mean? And a little trick for you, taking a little clean brush, 
Let me just scrub this other brush I have now on my tissue, clean that. Right, take a little bit of white, tiny, tiny bit of white. And let's just create some mist at the end of this hill here. So I'll go round in circles all the way along the bottom and then you're going to soften it upwards. Just with the tip of your brush, very, very gently. And even merge them together as well. Look, we've some lovely mist then going on off in the distance. Isn't that wonderful? So easy. All I'm doing is swinging my brush around in little circles. You know, right down there. Look at that. Isn't that fantastic? And you can even go off up here into the distance as well. Scrubble along. And immediately you have lots of depth in your, in your landscape, don't you? Lots of distance and depth. And it's so easy to do. Okay? Now that's one step of creating the mist. If you don't like those swirls, and I don't, not for this landscape, I'm going to take my soft brush and pull them downwards, left and right, up and down, look. Soften them right in to the hill. And it's lovely and soft and lovely and smooth. There we go. Again, I keep sitting back to look. And that's one done. We then have one more dark one in front of this stone tree. So let's just dampen our brushes again. Take some black and take a little blue. And because this is a slightly richer colour, I might take a touch of cadmium yellow, just a touch. Tiny, tiny touch. Take a bit more blue. If you think it's a bit too much green, take a tiny touch of crimson. That'll dull it down slightly. That'll take the greeny tinge out of it. We'll just have a look at that now. Okay. I'm not going out for a complete representation of the photograph. It's just an impression, that's all. And look, we can soften it down into the mist and even let it gently disappear across. There. Now, how was that? Simple but effective. Now, another thing I want to do is, let me just clean that brush very quickly, just scrub it out some tissue. I want to create some lovely mist at the bottom of this because I will then put my dark trees in front of that mist. Okay? So, I'm just going to again just take some white, nice and simple. You could even take a touch of Naples yellow, perhaps, and white. And let's just rub that across the base of that, going right across the whole way. Create a lovely mist, off in that distance. So then we'll have a nice light against a dark, you see? So when I put my trees in front of this, now my dark trees, it's going to make a lovely contrast and it's going to give so much distance to the painting it'll look like the hills are miles and miles and miles away which they are if i didn't do this now and i just left all my hills with no mist they would look very close wouldn't they they would seem like they're right in front of us but this little touch of mist i think gives it a lot of distance lots of depth and it makes for a lovely soft landscape and that's my aim today lovely soft landscape but when it gets to the front i put in lovely strong red colors okay now let me take a look at the photograph we have some nice dark trees coming along let's focus on trees dark trees this time okay we could use let me think now what brush could i use there's lots of different brushes that i can use for this um I might try, just for now, my large stubby. You could try something smaller, if you're not confident with the large one. Um, let me show you. So you could even try something like this. But I might try the large one, just for now. Just to get some of it done quicker. Okay? That's the only reason. Now, I'm giving it a good clean. And I'm going to make a nice rich, dark, blacky green. Let's take some 
black. My brush was only slightly damp, okay? Rich black, some phthalo blue, some burnt umber, and a hint of yellow. Just to give it a touch of green, a greeny kind of tinge to it, that's all. Now we have a nice big one here, don't we? I'm going to go right up here. It's not in the photograph, I'm just going to go right up over the mountain there, okay? And fill that in. Okay, leave it at that. That's that one done. Again, let's take some burnt umber, some phthalo blue. That will even do, I'd say. And we have a nice big patch of trees coming down here. Down the hill. Um, okay, let me see. I'll take some more burnt umber, some more phthalo. I'm using just a dry brush at this stage now. It's just paint, really. All right? Nothing else, just paint. And let's just go on and give a suggestion of tops of trees here and there. See? Coming down like that. I'm kind of twisting my brush as I go. That's kind of the technique I use. Alright. Now, so it's getting kind of messy. It's getting, it's mixing in with the, the mist. So I'm putting this brush down and I'm going to take another brush. My slightly smaller one. Let's make that mix again. Burnt umber, phthalo blue, touch black. And it gives you a nice blacky, greeny kind of a tinge. Greeny kind of a hue. See? It's a very dark colour. Let's take a bit more burnt umber than that. I'm only just making it my own, okay? I'm not copying the photograph exactly. This is only for a tutorial, that's all. Alright? Um, okay, I will leave it at that, I think. Uh, let me just take a look. Alright, just round that one slightly more there. Okay. Now, again, I sit back and take a look. I might add a touch of light onto some of those, even with this brush here. So let me just clean that on my tissue. And all I'm going to do to add a bit of light to that is simply take some Naples Yellow. Mix it in with this colour, a little, so we have this bright, mustardy type of colour. So it's just a lighter shade of what we had. And I'll go along and suggest the light on the left hand side of the trees, okay? Now it's only very subtle, you won't see it that much. Understand what I mean? It's a very, very subtle light. Uh, let me put a little bit on some of those. Just on the right hand side. Touch of white, touch of Naples yellow. And let's go up here and suggest a little of it there, a little there. Um, just kind of catching the corner of the trees. And a little up here, okay? And I suggest one or two lower down. There. Simple. Job done. Let's leave it at that. Some nice subtle lines up there. Right, I'm going to go back to my bigger brush and put in some of the land. And the land will be a very similar colour to what we just used. Okay? So I'm going to take, just dampen some of that, take some yellow, some Naples yellow. Let me just have a look at that now. Okay, that will do fine. So that's the same colour we just used for the lights. Alright, I'm just going to pull it across very gently. And I'm even going to soften it into the mist with my finger, look. You see that? It almost disappears into the distance. So let's now mix a bit of that colour. Let's take some Naples yellow with some white and we'll take a touch of phthalo blue and a touch of burnt umber so I'm going to scrape that colour along here now again pulling some of that dark out 
see pulling the dark trees out into it and that gives you some movement doesn't it and as it comes down it's going to get a bit greener so I'm going to start making it a bit more green so let's take some thalo blue now I've taken a touch of turpentine let's take some thalo blue some cadmium yellow and I'll take a touch of burnt umber so it's going to start getting look just slightly more greener that's all and come up here and pull it down the hill and soften it in to everything else this is a nice tutorial now isn't this a nice one to practice let's just fill all this in now all the way down so let's dampen the brush well take lots of phthalo blue lots of cadmium yellow so that gives us a rich green doesn't it then a touch of burnt umber and that will soften it right down the burnt umber will take the the harshness and the brashness out of the out of the green it makes it a much more earthy color that's all well this is just a kind of a base now that I'm doing here I will be adding some texture to this very soon I just want to get this nice rich color in now we have a shadow coming off of this I'm going to put a nice dark shadow across the field from this okay shadow just coming off of it and let's make it slightly greener as it comes down see how dry it is I'm scrubbing it across on the canvas it's really really dry and this is just an under kind of an undercoat I'll be going over this now with the fan brush creating some nice grasses and all that type of thing well, as it comes down we end up with a nice rich green right down at the bottom the reason I used all these pale colours at the end is to give it lots of distance so you can see now I'm using lots of rich colour and bright colour look and that would suggest to us that it's coming forward and it's right up in front of us there we go now nearly done See, that was just fun, wasn't it? A lot of fun doing that colour. Nice, soft colours merging from one to another. Now, let me just take a look at this and see how we're looking. Yeah, that's not bad. Is it? I will soften some of that bright colour across up here as well. Just sort of merge everything together nicely. And what I'll do next is I'm going to start with a fan brush. I have a new fan brush. I'm going to start adding some lights off in the distance there so let me dampen this take some Naples yellow some cadmium yellow I'm thinking maybe just those two colours for now and I want to create some light hitting the landscape okay so let me just check it first now just very quickly to see will this be right yeah it's not bad I'll gently tap 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 across here soften it you see I'm only creating a little bit of texture that's all very gentle amount of texture gently up here almost let it disappear okay no okay now let's rub that on my tissue just get that color off and let me just soften it here and there and we have some coming down here okay. just adding a little bit a little touch of light 
small, small touches. I'm going to try a little touch of phthalo with a little touch of white and a touch of naples also. I'm going to try that one way off in the distance there as well. It's a nice colour, I like that. Gently tapping, tap, 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 here and there, creating some natural light hitting the landscape. You see, you don't want these colours too rich because they're all way off in the distance. You want to give it lots of depth. That's what you want to do. So you can see now we have a nice light patch coming through here, don't we? Okay, again, rub your brush on some tissue and let's soften that out. And next thing I'm going to do is start bringing in some um, little bits of grass, okay? Little touches of grass here and there. So I might take some yellow with that lighter colour I just used and I might flick some bits of grass here and there, look. And of course, as it comes closer to you, it's going to become a lot more prominent, isn't it? There we go, just flicking it away, off into the distance. It's just an impression, that's all I'm going for. Most of this will be covered by red poppies anyway, but this is just an impression of kind of tall grasses here and there. Take some yellow and some white. See? Little impressions, little flicks of grasses coming off here and there. It's just a nice simple way of creating a nice landscape, that's all. Simple techniques. Now, I would normally go in with a pointy brush and pull in lovely little flicks of grass, but I just want to show you how to create a kind of a feel with texture. It's a simple way of doing it. Okay, now I'm leaving it at that. I'm going to pick up a smaller fan brush and I'm going to take some cadmium red. Okay, nice cadmium red. And I might take a touch of yellow as well. And I might suggest a touch of some of those poppies here and there, off in the distance, okay? Now it is a poppy field after all, so there has to be poppies in it. Not just in front, but also off in the distance. And um, we can put a few along here. Let's just increase this colour just a little. So you can see what I'm getting at now, it's just little patches of red here and there, see it? And as it comes closer to us, it's going to get a lot the those little patches are going to get a lot more um, vibrant and they'll be more kind of solid. So look. There you see. So you understand what I mean? Let's go with the corner of the brush and create little blobs of them, you see what I mean? And it's just an impression, you're only creating an impression of clumps of poppy flowers together in the landscape. Now let me just stop for a moment and check that, let's not overdo it, yes? Um, okay, now we're getting a lot closer so we could take a small round brush or, or a flat brush and let's start getting really rich with this little touch of crimson, lots of red and look, little clumps of colour, see? Lots of big clumps of colour and little flicks, flicks with the brush, you see? Again, thick paint, lots of thick paint on its own, nothing else. Let's take a touch of yellow into that. 
that will give it a nice orangey ready kind of a feel see oh I like that because if you look at the photograph you can't kind of make out the flowers can you it's just lots of clumps of uh, colour together you can't really make them out as such so do try and just keep it simple and kind of I almost squint my eyes slightly when I'm doing this because you're not looking at all the little details you're, you're kind of only seeing the shadows the lights and the darks and that really helps oh, we'll just stop there and take a look again isn't that lovely okay at this stage I'm going to pick up a small round brush all right let me find a nice small round brush a small thin kind of a brush now let me see let me see what we have okay not that one this one very pointy brush and let's get some rich green and suggest some little blades of grass that type, that type of thing okay some yellow and some blue plenty of turpentine and you see a couple of little blades of grass now you'll pick up some of the red but that's fine that'll complement the painting just one or two here and there no big deal just a couple just in front okay oh what was that coming on I like that right this is the exciting part the part we've all been waiting for let's take a palette knife I know we haven't done much work with a palette knife lately so I'm going to take this kind of a palette knife okay you can use this type of one if you like or um, something that's more pointy let's go with this one here a basic palette knife let's get some nice bright parts of this red in now let's get some cadmium yellow there lots of cadmium red as well give the two of those a very slight mix don't over mix them you want it to look like a marbled effect all right and let's just go in here and give it some look at that let's go with one one way and another one the other way okay isn't that wonderful and let's put one here and another one here lots of thick paint and only again you're only suggesting it okay you see that's all I'm only just suggesting poppies that's all I'm trying to do the hint of yellow just I suppose it suggests that the light is catching them here and there now by looking at this you can't see any actual poppy flower can you but you know by looking at it it's a poppy field and that's the type of effect that I like creating I like to let someone's imagination fill in the blanks because I could be here all day now painting each flower individually trying to create an actual poppy field flower um, but that's just no I just prefer to keep it like this it's um it has an almost an abstract feel to it doesn't it but I think it works now let me get some more cadmium red a lovely color some bright cadmium red and let's go in here with another one or two we can create some much bigger ones down towards the front if you like you see just with the knife on its own nothing else it's not wonderful what a fantastic tool and let's just put in lots of dabs of color all over the place 
just keep in mind the ones at the bottom will be much bigger so much bigger clumps of that red see now let's create a little bit of highlight on those I'll take a little touch of Naples yellow and some cadmium yellow and I'll just add a little flick of light to some of those just flicking the palette knife around here and there that's all nothing too too fancy and then I'm going to take my palette knife I'll take some black a tiny bit of black on the tip of my palette knife and I'm just going to suggest some little kind of the centers of some of the flowers just one or two you see it just adds that little bit of life to the flowers doesn't it okay and there is one thing I should do I think for this um, very important task and that is to add a bird let's take a small pointy brush with some black and go up here and put a little bird flying across the dark part of the sky just like that now you can keep going if you want you can keep going and adding little details to this um, you can look you can redefine some of the leaves perhaps just with your brush just to give it a bit more symmetry that's all but in general you don't you don't have to really and I might add a couple of dark grasses with some black and some yellow to them look just one one or two just here and there again it's just an impression that's all it is all right just an impression so I think that is about it let's now just take some black and sign this I go down to the corner down here and sign it look S Conway and let me zoom in now you could see how easily I created this you could keep going and adding lots and lots and lots of red if you wanted to um, I just wanted to keep it simple all right let me zoom in I love that light up in the sky that's nice isn't it it's almost like the sun is trying to get through so look it was just so nice and simple you can see I just added a little bit of warmth across the sky off in the horizon just very very quickly and you can see the mist creates a lovely depth in the painting and you can you saw how easy that was now I had it done in 10 minutes so you don't have to spend too much time trying to create a nice landscape okay just don't be afraid to try it and remember shadows are everything you need shadows in a painting that tells you where the light is coming from I come down then to our lovely poppies a very very quick and loose impression that's all I was after and I you know I might just keep going and adding little touches of red here and there but I think in general I've achieved what I wanted to create a nice landscape and poppy fields and you could use lots of these different techniques for your own let me turn the camera you could you could use um, techniques for trees and um, techniques for creating little bits of grass in the field so there's lots of different stuff that you can use just in this one tutorial yeah I, I think that's that's what I love teaching you know just straighten that there right that's grand okay I hope you enjoyed it let me know what you think um, it's a little different to the one I had before uh, I suppose just with the sky I hope it's helped you and I hope you've got something from it uh, if anything else a bit of inspiration uh, don't be I'll have to fix this thing don't be afraid to try okay it's only paint and canvas just try it what's the worst that can happen I'll see you next week thank you so much if you want my little green stubby brushes um, you will have to wear them in 
So a couple of uses before they start thickening up and bulking out for trees and that kind of thing. You can just send me an email, stephenconway12 at gmail.com. You should see the link there. Um, I can send the brushes to you, no problem at all. Thank you very much again for your support. Um, I will be back next week with another tutorial. Um, let me see, is there anything? No, I need to show you before I go. No, I don't think there is. No, there's not. Um, I'll see you next week. Have fun with that. Thank you so much and God bless you all.